You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto Excellence, Collision Specialists, 631-261-6420. That's 631-261-6420. Auto Excellence. Pro wrestler, bro. That's feel be the world's. It feels proper. It feels correct. How about gratifying? It feels right. Of course it's gratifying. Here he is. At the, at the couch. Tommy Cairo. Tommy. Thank you. How are you, buddy? I'm great. It's great to be here, to meet you guys, uh, Jimmy and Mike. And uh, it was a long time coming. We've been communicating for a long time. I was I had the show going. You had for the a show on while, the channel, yeah. You know, and then things changed, and I wind up uh, having to deal with a situation that I never thought I would have to. And, well, uh, well, we're gonna go, Tom. We're gonna go a little reverse, right? So most people would probably start in your origins. I want to start where we are today. You drove here from New Jersey, mm -hmm. took the time out of your busy schedule, if you could. Um, could you stand up and sure. maybe show the people? Yep. Let me hit the robotic activation. There you <laughs> go. So if you see me if I walk a little? Anyone can see. Good there job, babe. All right. All right, Tommy. So if anybody doesn't realize, Tommy now has a prosthesis leg, right? Yep. So... Let's go. Let's okay. tell the fans. Okay. What happened to you, Tommy Cairo, last summer to now? So um, I'm lucky enough and blessed enough to have worked hard enough between my wife and I to finally have a little place that we could go to that we didn't have to rent out to offset the cost and all of that. And we wound up with a beautiful place in a gated community with a private beach down in Virginia. So I'm down there by myself. Uh, son is, was in school at the time. My wife's a realtor, so very hard for her to get away. So I was down here, and I'm sitting on the beach, and I'm still not happy because I'm a worrier. And I'm thinking, you know, my son's in school, but that's not a good enough excuse because when he, he's off of school, he's home, and even if it's only a little bit of time, I should be there. So I packed up my shit, and I went home. But right before that happened, I had gone in the water. I only went into waist deep. Okay, this is the Delaware Bay. I mean, I'm sorry, this is the Chesapeake Bay. Um, no different than if you go in the water in New Jersey in the summer in the heat, you got bacteria in the whole nine yards. Well, I felt like, like I got stung. And I re remember being stung by grabbing the fins of a fish in Florida. And I, it was like the same feeling, like a, a numbness. So when I looked at my leg when I got out and sat on a chair before I decided to go home, it was... A, a area about from the top of my knee to the inside of my groin and it looked like some kind of state it was just a thin outline nothing in the middle that that was it well you know I, my but you could see a line you could see it yes so are you like whoa what is this no or? no i'm like we all are yes when you go to a doctor dermatologist he, he can't identify exactly what it is contact dermatitis and what do you do you put a little triple up antibiotic on it, and you go on your way. Mm. Well, that developed into a whole week that I had sepsis shock and didn't even know it was walking around. My wife bringing me to the emergency room, and that quick I ended up, they had to take my legs, my toes had turned black, they had to take my leg, I have eight inches below my knee still, which gives me the mechanics of the knee, and that area that we talked about, which my wife kind of like, you know, debated, oh, I don't think you got it from, whatever it is, that thing that I got in the water developed into the largest wound. I had uh, plastic surgery on this, out of where, wound back and a whole nine yards, and it hit different areas, and if you know uh, that um, pneumococcal and that flesh-eating disease, which gives you the sepsis, it doesn't discriminate. Uh, it can hit you in four different areas that aren't connected to each other. So I got my foot, my toes, chopped it off. Then I had an area here and this big area here. On top of that, because I was down between rehab and a hospital, 74 days on my back, I wound up with a bed wound on my butt, which lasted healing-wise as long as everything else. 
But I think you're almost understating it, Chris. Who, us who were friends with you and people even closer to you, you were close to death. Okay. So my wife had to fill in the blanks for me. So I get ex go into the hospital, an emergency room, and um, all this just moves so quickly. Well, so, let, me, let me just ask you a question. You see this line, all of a sudden, are you seeing things happening to your leg that you're like, I no. need to go to a hospital? No. What makes you go to the My hospital? My wife. Your wife. I'm taking you to the emergency room. I don't remember that. I, a week before, I'm taking my son to youth group, and I, I said to him, I think I know what's wrong with my foot. I think I sprained my ankle. That's the last thing I remember. And my son said he heard me talking to myself in a room. I had sepsis in my system for a week. I was walking around with it. Wow. Poisoned. The doctor says that's inhuman. All right. A liver failure, kidney failure, on a ventilator. AFib, sepsis, sepsis with sepsis shock, and psychotic episode. I told everybody I was going to kill them. I told my wife I would kill her. I told my daughter, I said, would your pastor approve this? I thought I was being committed. So I do remember bits of that when I was in recovery after surgery. I told a big guy there that I was going to come back and shoot him. I told my wife I was going to shoot her. You know, completely out of it. So I got Kevlar mitts on to not harm myself because I was violent, psychotic. Well, I'm thinking, I'm trying to rip through them with my fingernails, right? And nobody will talk to me. My family had left. No water, no food, okay? I said, you know what? I just figured out they're not trying to have me committed. This is hell. Mm. I'm in hell, okay? Then I had this vision that I was sent back to the door where you go to heaven by the devil who appeared with long fingers and this just weird. This is like, I don't know if this is like part of the psychosis or whatever, or if I almost died and I came back, don't know. Fact of the matter is, I should have been dead. You know, 65 and still alive. So my wife gets the word that your husband may not make the, the night. So she contacts my friend, Pauly Baikow, equalizer from ECW, my, my heart, my, my top guy. And uh, she, she says, you know, they told me he may not make the night. He said, don't you realize who's laying in that bed? You've been married to him all these years. That's the fucking Iron Man. He's a tough son of a bitch. He ain't going to die. Three days later, this doctor worked on me like a fucking animal. I wake up to an Indian doctor standing down looking at me, and I love them guys because they're so smart. And he said, all your levels are back to normal. What? I don't even know what he's talking about. Right. All that had to be filled in by my wife. So I walk, walking around poisoned, should have been dead five different ways, and here I am. Thank God. Lost my leg, but... It's either this or six feet up. Now, did they figure out what they think happened in the water that day? No. Uh, I somehow got the flesh-eating eating disease. Um, I believe that whatever stung me, of course, was in infected because it's in the water. Right. And it's July, and it's hot, right? So all the right conditions, and I'm a diabetic. So to tell you how cautious I'm being, I went back to Virginia.